double hat trick, I know the code too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition, a very, very special edition of the offseason, man. As usual, I'm your guy, Scott. Uh, you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, man, Barbershare. Scott, follow the Barbershare Network, H&B Media. You know everything on there. Y'all need to follow at Barbershare Net. And today we have a very, 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 very special guest. We've got the one and only Taylor Rooks, of course, you've seen on NBA on TNT. Uh, Bleach Report, and right now she is about to begin her second season with Amazon's Thursday Night Football. Taylor, thank you for taking uh, time out your very busy schedule to join me today. No, absolutely. I am so happy to do it. Chicago holds a very special place in my heart, so I'm, I'm happy to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I've been in Los Angeles. This is the first time I've interviewed somebody in Los Angeles while I'm in Chicago because uh, oh. I've been in Los Angeles for like a decade now. So this is this is a reversal right here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Um, a question I like to ask to start off my interviews is my one of my favorite sports documentaries is Kobe Bryant Muse. So I like to ask everybody, what are some of your muses? I guess as you would say, you know, coming into this. You know, interviewing sports media game. It could be family members, you know, whoever. Who are some of your muses? I mean, I feel like I had so many, but the real answer is just every black woman that was doing this. Every black woman that I watched growing up meant so much to me. And I mean, just even from the local level right, right in front of me, being from the suburbs of Atlanta, I was looking at, you know, Monica Pearson and I was saying, okay, this is a woman who looks like me that's delivering the news. But then there's also people like Carrie Champion and Pam Oliver and Jamel Hill. I've just had people that I've looked at and seen myself and just seen how good they were at the job. And I would definitely say that they have been muses in my life for sure. Definitely. Was there like, uh, was there like a certain moment that you had that's like, I know with me in sports, uh, first time I seen Michael Jordan in 1996 finals, you know, growing up in Chicago, I was like, I want to do something in sports. Yeah. What was that one moment for you? Honestly, I would have to point to my dad. So my dad played football at the University of Illinois. He was a, a really great college player. He still holds, I think, the he's second with the rushing record at U of I still at this point. So whenever we would go back and visit, I would hear people always bring up this one run that he had against Ohio State in the 80s. It was like the, what they said to him every single time. And so I asked if I could see it. I remember watching that and just thinking it was so cool what he meant to people in that moment. And how sports creates such nice memories for others. Um, so a, I owe a lot of just my love of the game to my dad and everything that he showed me about the game. So I would say my dad. Yeah. No, you had like a front row view to it. I know that had to be, you know, cool to watch growing up. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, my, like my uncle played for the Cardinals. So when, you know, when he was here, we would always go to Bush Stadium for his birthday and watch the games. I just tie a lot of, special memories in my life to some sort of sports memory, which is really cool. That's fire. Um, now, yeah. when we came on, we talked about, you know, you have a special place in your heart for Chicago. Now we know yeah. uh, you went to U of I. Uh, I've, I, I didn't go to U of I, but I spent a lot of time in U of I. I went to Columbia College, downtown Chicago, and anybody knows Columbia, we didn't really have a party scene. So I was <laughs> in U of I a lot from like 2007 to 2012. But um, after you went to U of I, you uh, worked at the Big Ten Network, also in Chicago. So tell yeah. me, what was something about Chicago that you enjoyed the most while you were there? So many things. I mean, so I lived in Chicago for two years. But I also, when I was younger, I lived in Chicago for two years. I went to University of Chicago Lab. My okay. family is, like, from the Midwest. Um, so I've had a, a few stints in Chicago, but I love the people. Um, I love that it is such a big city, but it still feels homey. You've got the river running through it. You've got a very underrated restaurant scene. I think Chicago is like top five restaurant scenes in the U.S. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not counting necessarily this, but I miss Harold's every day. Six feet, extra miles. <laughs> Six feet, extra miles. So anytime I go to Chicago, I am going. The, I used to, literally, I would go to the one on 79th. The last oh. time I was there, like, was it open or, like, someone told me that they don't have any more? I don't know. So I've been going to the one in the loop. So I got to find a new location. Uh, right. <laughs> but, yes, I, I love so many things about Chicago. I could go on and on. But certainly the food and the people stick out to me. 
Yeah, I'm glad you said Harold. I was definitely gonna ask where you Harold's or Uncle Remus. You know, that's a long time. Harold's and I it's not close. I can't believe people that pick Uncle Remus. I don't believe <laughs> it. If you are an Uncle Remus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't believe it. Either. Like my my family, half my family's from the West Side of Chicago, so they they're big uh, Uncle Remus people. But we, yeah. we Harold's over there all day. And then my man, one of my guys, uh, Larry's legend, is he's like the Harold's kind of sewer. He always says Uncle Remus ain't bad. It's the second best uh, Harold's in the city. But, um, but you know, uh, when it comes to Chicago, and I know, uh, you know, you, you spent time in LA, you know, of course, you're there right now. One thing that kind of stood out to me about Chicago and LA is one thing I know is they love the Lakers, they love the Dodgers, but it's not really like a sports city like Chicago. Like, what was something when you were here? Like, was there a special moment or, or a playoff run for any team that kind of showed you just how big of a sports town Chicago is? Yeah, I mean, so when I was there, I was covering college sports, so I felt kind of separate from the pro scene in in Chicago. Um, I would love going to Bulls games. That was always a really good time, but the two years that I was there, it wasn't like a super high time for either sport, so it wasn't like I was able to experience those moments, but when I think of sports in Chicago, I really just think of the true fandom a really cool thing about chicago is the people there that care about the sports really know the sport and they really know the history they care about it in a real way there's no fair weatherness to it at all so that's really what i think of when i think about chicago sports i've also had really fun times in wrigleyville the first year that i lived there i was right on addison so i would go to the cubs game sometimes um chicago like uses sports as a real like fun activity like it is a part of their everyday life and I think the only other place that feels a lot like that is probably Philly um in New York at times it is embedded in the culture of this city um so it's hard to talk about Chicago without talking about the teams yeah, and you bring up the Cubs. We all know Cubs and Sox out here is like Buzz and Cribs. Like you got, you got to pick yeah. one. Like just, <laughs> there's no, there's no. Uh, you can't be a Chicago baseball fan. That just is. No, nope. that, that doesn't happen. Even though I'm disowning the White Sox for a little bit right now, but it, I'll be a whole another hour renting on them. But um, <laughs> to be clear, I have no allegiance. So Cubs fans no are coming, White Sox don't cover me. I, I'm a Cardinals fan. <laughs> you don't need either one of them with you know with uh, of course even though you're a Cardinals fan you're you're from the Atlanta area you got y'all got the Braves Braves killing everybody right now so you don't really need exactly to go to the but, yeah I got, um, to up on, I got to go up on some high times with the Braves you know it's Chipper Jones era so it's it's been cool. Definitely. Um, now, of course, we all know you, you started more with, you know, with NBA, uh, but you're getting into NFL now. It's your second year um, Thursday night football. What What do you think is like, you know, I watch I watch all the interviews. I'm a big fan of, you, of all your interviews. Um, Thank you. Know, you. I started interviewing like two years ago. Um, I watch your interviews a lot. I take notes from it. What What's something that <laughs> is different between interviewing NFL players and NBA players? That's a really good question. Um, I think that in the NBA, there is a large focus on like the individuality of each person. So those interviews tend to be a bit more personal, a bit more about who you are, a bit more about your off the court life, which is really nice. Um, I think that with the NFL, because it is such this massive sport, we care so deeply about what's happening in between those lines. I think that the NFL interviews tend to have more of a focus on the game, what is happening. So it's nice to flex two different muscles and focus on two different things and also just see the difference in, in personnel around both leagues. Like they're both really fun and I enjoy both, but they're absolutely different for sure. I, I definitely agree with that. I've been uh I've been doing like coverage for like this is like my my third season doing the Chicago Bears uh it's about to get my third season covering the Clippers and one thing I've noticed too is like you brought up like how different it is like the preparation too like of course it's only one game a week but you know I just came back from Bears camp today and it's like they're so like in tune with it was that something like you mm -hmm. noticed like you know from you know I know when you do your interview step off of the facility um it's like a little bit more like kind of keyed in a little bit yeah, like when I think about the features that I did last year, the ones with Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley ended up sort of being my favorites because we got to be out of the facility. You got to see an incredibly personal side of them. 
I was able to mix some of those like NBA ethos with this NFL feature, seeing what they're like outside of their sport. So with Jalen, we went to a restaurant he really loves in Philly called Food Chasers. We got to interact with the people that were at the restaurant. We got to cook in the kitchen. It was a fun piece for him. Uh, with Saquon, he let us into his home. We did it in his living room. We saw how he lives, what he thinks about things. So those type of features I tend to be drawn to and something I'm really trying to push myself with this season is doing more different environments, different settings. Can we get people out of how we see them um, and see it a little different? So that's what I hope to do in, in season two with Tiana. Definitely. Um, I say like, you know, is, is Jalen Hurts your favorite interview all of all time? Like what's your favorite of all time if, if it isn't Jalen Hurts? I don't know if I have a favorite interview of all time. And I sort of like that I don't because I think when that interview happens, I'll know it. And that means that at some point in the future, I'm going to say that was it. Okay. You know, and obviously I want to make every single interview the absolute best that it can. I love nothing more than, than that feeling of sitting down with somebody and talking to them and making them feel understood. Um, so I certainly have ones that that I love, but I like having that chase for the favorite. And I don't know if I if I have just a clear favorite yet, but, okay. but hopefully it'll come. Yeah. Uh, my favorite interview is probably have to be the Demar Derozan one. I think that's something where like Thank right you. when the Bulls. Um, I was never like the biggest Demar fan when he was in Toronto and San Antonio, but when he came to Chicago, that kind of like put more of a light on him to me. I kind of learned more about Demar, and so I kind of now like Bulls fans. We love Demar, so that's definitely probably my favorite interview of yours. Thank you, I appreciate that so much. And Demar is great. And one thing about that interview, the first time that I interviewed him, um, when my show was still Take It There, and he was on the Spurs, I had never met him before. Mm -hmm. And he was so gracious and so open. We did that interview and he has done like three interviews with me since like, he's just such a solid person. He's incredibly thoughtful. He's super introspective and it shines. I think whenever he talks in his interviews, because he's 100% himself, 100% of the time. Um, I will never have a bad thing to say about Demond Rosen. He's great. Yeah. He seems like a super cool dude. Um, yeah. Now I want to ask, like, when it comes to, like, you know, journeys and, like, whether, you know, making it to the top of, uh, you know, your profession. And I think when it comes to social media, we only see the ups and then the highs. We never see, like, the the down parts of what was a part in your career where it kind of felt like, well, I really don't know how I'm going to get out of this. And, like, what kept you going past that? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the thing. It's like I certainly don't feel like I'm at the top of my profession. You know, I feel like I have so many things I want to get better at. There's so many things that I want to accomplish. And that is another thing that I think is a constant journey that you'll be on in the career. I always want there to be room for improvement and there's so much to improve. I feel like I've had obstacles and hurdles throughout my career. When I first started, something that really used to bother me was like social media, for example. I used to really care about social media reaction or I thought that the world of the internet was the world that my work was for. But then I realized that the internet is just like the loudest part, but it isn't like the most meaningful part. The world is so much bigger than what we hold in our hands and like the laptop in front of us. And it just took me a bit to realize that that wasn't what is important. Um, and I always say that to younger journalists now, like do not get caught up in what social media is because it's, yeah. it truly is irrelevant. The thing that you can do is be good at your craft, work on it constantly and tirelessly because that's what you can control. You can't control people that you don't know. Um, yeah. And eventually you'll just be completely numb to whatever, whoever has to say whatever. Um, but that for sure was something that used to used to bother me. And also, you know, being being a black woman in sports is already a thing. I also think yeah. at times we are we are very over sexualized. I think that we're we're talked about in ways that sometimes our counterparts aren't. So there's there's a lot of things I feel like I could go on and on. But the best thing that you can do is make sure that you're good at the job and you're always prepared and you're always willing to work. And that's what I tell myself every day. 
Definitely, definitely. Um, last question. I know you got to run. Uh, <laughs> this one isn't, isn't a sports related question. I just, I'm, I'm a big TV guy, so I always ask you this question: If you were stuck on an island, you can only watch five TV shows. Well, what would those five be? What a good question, because so I am a big TV person, too. I almost don't like movies. I like I prefer TV. I, I like watching episodes and like seeing the characters develop. Yeah, but yeah. okay, I shows. Oh, so, I mean, I love The Wire. Oh, yeah. There we go. We're on the right track here. <laughs> Even though I do not like how Game of Thrones ended at all. It is something that would be cool. Like, there's episodes that would be cool to watch over and over on an island, right? right? So I'll say Game of Thrones. Um, Got to throw in something light and funny and easy. I'm torn between, like, Fresh Prince or Martin. I'm going to say Fresh Prince. Okay. Um, I'm I'm torn between Sopranos and Mad Men. You can't have both. Yeah. I'm going to say Sopranos. And my fifth, is that fifth or fourth? That's fourth. Okay, so my fourth, Sopranos was fourth or I'm about to say my fourth? Sopranos was fourth. Okay, so my fifth. The pressure is like really on. (laughs) Because I'm like, I have to watch it on loop on this island. Do I have enough variety? Are you a Kirby Enthusiasm fan? No, and it's not that I'm not a fan. It's that I, that is actually a show I have given a chance. I'm sure, like anything I see, Larry David, I think is funny. So, like, I'm sure I would love it. But in the vein of that, maybe I would eat, go like Veep or The Office. I like both of those shows, something like that. So I have some drama. I have fantasy. I have like, you know, a, an important black television show that was very formative for me. And then I'll get like. Kind of that dry, deadpan humor with the beat. <laughs> Definitely. Well, uh, thank you, Taylor, for, for joining me. Um, what do you pick? Uh, I would say my favorite is uh, the King of Queens. Um, that would be King of Queens. That's a good one. Uh, the Wire, Soprano, Seinfeld, and the Curve Enthusiasm. You have variety, too. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I learned so much about your humor and what you like through those picks. So yeah, I'm in. 100%, 100%. <laughs> well, thank you, Taylor, for joining me. I, I know you got a role. I really appreciate you taking time out of, out of your schedule for joining me. Um, yeah. Anything you want to let anybody know if we get up out of here? Uh, no, I mean, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you can follow me on all the things just at Taylor Rux, just my name across all the platforms. Definitely. Y'all follow her and get in tune if you ain't. This is another edition of the off season. I'm Scott. We up out of here. Double hat trick, I know the code too. Ice trade, go 